Well, welcome everyone to Brivia's January 2023 webinar, How to Set Goals That Stick, A Pathway to Growth and Success. We are so excited to have you here with us today. My name is Steve Smith, and I'm the Vice President of Market Development at Brivia, where we make work better. Before we get on to the webinar today, I just want to announce some exciting news for you. And Steve, I think you can probably show this in full screen. Go back there. There we go. We are launching a monthly newsletter starting next month. We're so excited to, to offer this up for our hardcore fans. And it's going to be filled with information that's clear, concise, and easily actionable for both your personal and professional lives. So we're going to send you an email uh, with a link to our page to sign up for the webinar. But if it's something you absolutely cannot wait to sign up for, please go ahead and just send an email to contact at briviaconsulting.com. So now on to today's webinar. If you're anything like me, you've set a lot of goals in your both your personal and professional life. I know I set goals at the beginning of every year and, and also throughout the year. And what I found is that when I hit a goal and, and just totally crush it, how great that feels. But more often than not, the goals that I set either fail or they just kind of fizz out. And it used to leave me scratching my head thinking, why does this happen? I followed every tip I could ever find on setting goals. I used the SMART method. I displayed them everywhere. I talked to people about them. And they were still failing out. I think today what you're going to find is some aha moments where we're going to share some, some valuable tips on how to make goals meaningful. Uh, for today's webinar, we're going to have you here for about 45 minutes, which includes plenty of time for Q&A. So if you, this is the first time you've joined the Brevia webinar, you know that, uh, or we want you to know that we love interacting with our audience. So please use the Q&A function and also use the chat function. In fact, I'm gonna invite you to do that right now. Why don't you open up the chat on your Zoom and let us know where you're joining from today. We'd love to, to hear where you're joining us from today. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna to introduce to you today's presenter, Stephen DeGroote. So Steve is a good friend of mine, and he's also an expert in human behavior. He's a co-founder of Brivia, as well as our present president. He's an author who uh, has already written one book and his second book is set to come out later this year. And he's also the chief architect of the core algorithm. So Steve, why don't you, I get you to turn on your video and come join us here. Thank you uh, so much, Steve, for, for being here today. And I'm gonna hand it over to you and I will pop back on at the end for questions and answers. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Steve. And uh, welcome, everybody. I love it. Thank you for being here. There are people from all over Canada, from Calgary to Alberta to Ontario to the east to the west. All right. And even Selkirk, Manitoba. I love it. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Winnipeg today and uh, I'm bi-provincial. So sometimes I'm in Toronto, sometimes I'm in, uh, in Winnipeg. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I hope 2023 uh, is off to the best start possible for you and your family. And I want to know, you know, did you make uh, did you make any New Year's resolutions? <laughs> okay. Now, some of you might be excited because they're still going and others, this is the biggest time of year where millions of goals are set around New Year's resolutions, right? And people are excited about it. But it's also the time of year between now and the next few weeks where millions of them were fade uh, or fail. And uh, that's never, that never feels good. Right. So outside of New Year's resolutions, we actually set tons of goals, don't we? It's, it's uh, unbelievable how many goals that we set. Think about it. How many goals did you set last week? Right. <laughs> how many goals did you set last year? How many goals have you set in your lifetime? Right? If you think about it, there's very few things that we do more of than set goals. And that's why it's, it's interesting. I talk to people, they're like, yeah, you know, we're doing this webinar on goal setting there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, we've got this thing for setting goals. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we do it. We do it so often. Right. And it's amazing. I think part of it is some of us feel like we've done everything. You heard Steve in the introduction. Right. And thanks, Steve, for that great introduction. You know, people have done so many things around goals and we still we still uh, actually fail. Right. We you know, we 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 uh, we don't. We don't do as well as we hope to, even when we think we've got everything in line. And that's what we're here to talk about today. And I was talking about your news resolutions because, you know, people are ambivalent about them. Some people have given up on their New Year's resolutions, right? So, so it's an exciting time, but, you know, this is the thing about when we don't fit, when we don't succeed at goals, what are important to us, we don't feel really good. So 
What we're here to talk about today is even though we set goals, we sometimes succeed and others we struggle and others we fail altogether. We fall flat, right? And that's true in our personal lives and that's true uh, in work. So one of the things that I want to just really emphasize today, what we're going to do in our time together, Rivia is really about, as Steve said, making work and life better. We do it by optimizing human potential and trying to eliminate and even like decrease and eliminate unnecessary suffering. So we're going to talk today about what are goals. Now, some of this stuff is going to seem basic sense, but we're going to hopefully introduce a new twist that's going to elevate your success level. So I want you to think about questions. We're going to have time for questions. Use the chat as much as possible. We're going to talk about why are goals so important? Why do we succeed at some and fail at others? We're gonna take some time to review effective goals so that you can increase your chances of success. But my favorite thing today is sharing the number one factor that we at Rivia believe is the most important factor for increasing goal effort and goal success. So I think I wanted to just highlight that. Goal effort and goal success, not just goal success. Right? We're gonna talk a little bit about a bunch of things that cross over. What is a goal? Let's just start there, right? It's, it's an aimed for desired result. We do it, something, some things we place our effort in, it's to accomplish goals, also known they have different names. We call them different things like targets, activities, tasks, objectives, right? We have goals in our personal lives, right? Like health goals, financial goals, family goals. And we have goals in business too, because all businesses have purpose, right? They have large goals, strategies, right? We have people goals, process goals. We've got goals around performance, goals around results and profit and preferred results, all that stuff, right? And if you're a leader in an organization, not only do you have your own goals, you are responsible for helping other people set and achieve their goals. So there's it's like a double layer there, right? So we have goals almost for everything. We have so many goals. It's amazing if you think about it. It's one of the things that we do the most of. As a matter of fact, everything is goal oriented. Right? If you think about everything that you've done today, like every single thing up to getting onto this webinar, including getting to this webinar, all human behavior is goal oriented. Right? Think about it for either large ones or small ones. And actually, we set so many goals. We set so many goals. It's no wonder we're not better at it because there's very few things that we do more of than actually set goals, right? We set just thousands and thousands a year. So why are they so important, right? Because a lot of people talk about it's about success, it's about all this top level stuff, but goals are important mostly because it's, there's a really big one, right? <laughs> it's so cool, right? So I see in the chat, uh, yeah, awesome. Steve is on that, Lee. If you've got questions, throw them into the question and answer and we'll get to that. Um, awesome. And here's a really big reason. And some of us, I think, have forgotten this. Our number one reason for goals is to survive, right? That's, that's our number. Our, our survival is our number one goal individually and as a species. And I think sometimes we forget this. Goals become important for our survival. But see, once we are good at surviving, which we've been doing for quite a few uh, years, goals become important for, uh, for things like, uh, for, for thriving, right? Goals become important for supporting each other, developing ourselves, strengthening our ability to feel better. So goals help us survive and they help us flourish. Goals are important for actualizing and optimizing our full capacity, right? That's what they are. They help us, they help us effectively get to where we want to go, develop what we need to get right? Goals help us get to better. And if we do them really, really well, they help us get to better and they help us get there faster, right? So, you know, you hear a lot of things about the dopamine release. You hear a lot of, well, goals are important. Success is important because it releases nor norepinephrine and serotonin and all this stuff, or, right? Beyond that, beyond that physical momentary sense of fulfillment and that physical rush of neurochemicals, right? There is something really, 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 really important about goals, right? What makes them so fulfilling? What makes goals, and that's why like when we fail at goals, they feel so bad, right? It's the opposite. When we succeed at them, they feel really good. So what does it makes goals feel so uh, exhilarating, so great, right? And I talked about those neuro, those neuro uh, chemicals that are released and there's a bunch of physical research, but most of you know I'm gonna connect it to something that you can relate to, right? Which is most of you know, we get up every morning, every day, and we have very important needs, right? Very important needs. And, and we live also not with just important needs, right? Physical, psychological, emotional, social uh, needs, but we also have core values. We wake up in the morning and we have core values. We also have needs at work and we have them at life, 
Needs and values are important. Most of them reside in our heads and our hearts and they're kind of invisible. Like if we were sitting in the same room and I could see your goals, cause those are visible. You're, you're doing something. Most of you right now are probably facing a device, uh, an iPad, a computer or a phone, right? But see needs and values are really important. And this is where goals come in. Goals serve as an important mechanism by which we can do two things. Goals help us meet our needs and goals help us live our values. I'm gonna talk about why that's so important, right? Goals can help us meet our needs and, and goals help us live our values, right? And they're that behavioral operation, right? To help us get the things that are most important to us. They also do something else though. This is really important. Most of, most of you that have heard me speak before, I talk a lot about strengths. Goals give us an opportunity the opportunity and a mechanism to develop our strengths, to experience what we're capable of, right? Setting goals and accomplishing them help us demonstrate su success, strengthens evidence, concrete evidence that, you know, we can actually develop and grow and succeed. And this builds greater belief. This builds greater confidence. This provides greater momentum for surviving, but more importantly, for surviving in our relationships and in our work. So this is wild to me, right? We know they're important. We set them all the time. And if they're so important, right? And we've been doing it for so long, since the very beginning of time, we've been setting goals. Why is it then that some of them we succeed at, some of them we struggle at, and some of them we forget like altogether. Like we just forgot, oh yeah, that I set that goal. So why do they fail? Well, we're gonna talk a little bit. You know, if you're a human, you, you, you've under, you probably have understood why they fail. But what's in, important is how much this has been written about. Like uh, there's a place, words, wordsrated.com, which has a lot of research on writing and books and stuff like that. It, it states, and they do this fact finding, 17.1 million books were bought in the U.S. in the month of uh, January in 2022, right? 17 but on self-help, on setting goals on living better on all of that kind of stuff like there's so much out there in, in research there is a plethora of scientific and business related research and tons of studies on how to effectively set and achieve important goals it's in the millions right yet we still struggle and we continue to get stuck right we're not going to get into all the reasons like all of the the tons of reasons we're going to focus on two though two very important reasons. And you probably heard of these two, I'm pretty sure. One of them is ineffective goal setting and the other one is lack of motivation, right? And, and you might be sitting there going, yeah, well, tell me something I don't know, right? So hopefully we're gonna do that. <laughs> so it's interesting, we're, at Brivia, we agree 100% on the whole ineffective uh, goal setting. So we do have a giveaway in the, in the um, webinar follow-up. One of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna send you a goal, it's called the, the successful goal checklist, right? And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's talk about ineffective goals, right? It's true. Many of the goals that we set are ineffective because they lack some of these very important things. They're not clearly defined, right? In life or even at work. How many times have you had expectations that weren't really clear? They haven't been specific and measurable, right? We know that realistic, right? Uh, we're doing a blog as well. Realistic is often un, um, misunderstood. Realistic isn't, isn't always achievable. Realistic is, do we have the time, the energy, and the resources to do this? Sometimes it's not achievable. Sometimes it's not communicated clearly. Sometimes it's not supported, not time-driven, not time-specific. So we're not gonna get into all of, those, all of those items, but what I want you to know when you look at that list, those items are related to what we call clarity, right? They're about being clear on the what, the how, the when, Clarity is about direction. It's about timing. It's about measures. Clarity is important. This is where we start to diverge a little bit in Brivia, right? Not only, not only is it goals are successful when we've got clarity, when we've got all of those things that were listed, right? But we also, something else very important is happening, right? At Brivia, we really believe that there's something called connection and clarity. So if you've been to some of our other webinars, we talk a lot about the importance of connection. Humans require connection and clarity to be effective, to be efficient, and to be successful in everything that we do. And connection refers to a connection, which is like a significant relationship, strong relationship to someone or something, right? That's very important. We often talk about connection as about being connected to something valuable or meaningful. So when we focus mostly on connection, right? Or sorry, when we focus mostly on clarity, what we're doing is we're missing half the equation. 
So no wonder we struggle, struggle and get stuck. Think about any kind of recipe, right? Any kind of formula. How well does it work when you leave out half of the formula? What if it's the most important formula, right? So clarity is important. Because, I mean, let, let's think about this. Let's just do a quick check. And it's rhetorical. Have you ever been unmotivated when you have all the clarity in the world? When you have all the direction, when everything is set out, the timelines, all of that stuff? How many times have you had the steps, the structure, the detail, the timeline, and you still weren't motivated? Right? You can throw that stuff in the chat, right? <laughs> you may have even checked off every effective and successful goal che uh, checklist, right? You had all the clarity. See, it happens in our personal lives and it happens at work. And what's interesting is, is we have a, some webinars on our website and one of them is how to motivate the unmotivated. It's a really good one. And Chris Downey, our friend and colleague, a partner at Brivia, we were talking the other day, he goes, how many times do we, like, you know, something as simple as walk by a dirty dish on the counter or on the, in the living room, right? You know, we know what to do. We know where it needs to go. We know, right? And it still doesn't get done until something, something really important happens, like the doorbell rings or uh, somebody's coming over, someone important's coming over, right? Now we're moving to connection, okay? Now we're moving to connection, right? So we're talking about, we got all the clarity, but then something happens. And what I want to make very clear here is when we're not feeling motivated, this is so clear. There's nothing wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with you. There's just a lack of connection operating, connection to what's really important, not just important, this is, a, this, is, this is significant, but what's important to you, not to everyone around you, right? So let's talk about motivation, right? So much written on motivation. This is one of my favorite things to talk about where most of my research re resides. I've been for almost three decades helping people motivate other people, right? So lack of motivation ends on every single list, even chat GPT will, will say this, either in first place or second place around the things that is an impediment to us getting goals. My work on the core algorithm, right? My book that's coming out, super excited about it, has illuminated that motivation, enthusiasm, engagement, commitment, focus, even the level of effort, right? Where we direct it, how we direct it, and the degree to which we do it is a byproduct of meaning, and meaningful experiences. And that's our perspective at Brivia. It comes, starts to come down to meaning. Connection is about meaning and meaning is where connection lives according to our work, right? Meaning is where motivation lives also. Right? We actually really, really believe, and I want you to reflect on a, on a situation. I want you to go to a reflection, right? We don't use a lot of case studies. You be the case study. I want you to take a moment and think about a time when you, knocked a goal right out of the park. You nailed it, okay? I want you to think back to a time, maybe it was recently, an individual goal or maybe a, a, a project goal or a group goal, right? A goal where you were excited, motivated, enthusiastic, committed, and you put forth tons of effort, a goal that you did really well. Maybe you even did this goal better than well, better than expected, and maybe even faster than expected. I want you to go back to a time and I'm going to ask you to reflect on some questions. Now, you may or may not want to put it in the chat, but I would love to see, I would love to see your answers to these questions. The first question is, when you think back to that time when you were like pursuing that goal, setting that goal, attaining it, were your needs being met? Like in the pursuit of that goal, were you having were some of your social needs met, your relational needs, your needs to be involved, to be valued for encouragement or for support? Yes, maybe, or no. Let me see it in the chat. So when you think about that time you succeeded at a goal or you were pursuing it with optimal energy. All right, so I've got, I've, <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes, awesome. Thanks, Nancy. Right, and, and, and you don't have to put it in the chat, but I'd love to hear it because this is leading to something super important. Of course you were alert. Let's go to the next question. Yes, maybe, or no. I want to see it in the chat. When you think back to that time of setting or pursuing or attaining that goal, were you living important values? Like, were you aligned with relationships, shared goals, other people, integrity, accomplishment? How about making a difference? Were you aligned with values of maybe creativity or collaboration or respect or trust or all of those kinds of things? I see in the chat, yes, yes, yes. I don't see any maybes yet, right? Let's, let's keep, there, <laughs> there we go, there's a maybe. All right, let's go to the next question, right? 
when you think back to that time of pursuing and attaining that goal, were your were other goals of yours being accomplished? Like, were you were you personal goals of either getting better at something? Were you learning something? Were other goals around your professional development growing during that time, right? So we know that your needs were being met, your values were aligned. Yes, your goals, and, and maybe to some, awesome, and yes to others. Here's the final question. During that time of setting, pursuing, and attaining that goal, were you, were you, were there things that you were good at that you were able to bring to the table? Were you able to use your strengths? Were you able to use your knowledge or your skills or your efforts in a way that were leveraged to actually elevate the pursuit or the attainment of that goal? Let me see in the chat. Yes, maybe or no. Did you have the opportunity during that time? to identify and or leverage your goals. Yes, 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 absolutely. So we've asked thousands of people around the world to reflect on this great moment of achieving goals. And what we're asking you specifically, we're gonna get at that, is that your success in that moment was no accident. This is where we get into this number one factor. Those questions were specific to something I call the core four. We're gonna to get to that right away. Your success in that moment was no accident because your motivation, your fulfillment, you experienced in the beginning and throughout was no accident either, right? The four questions I just asked were, were, were critical and we're gonna talk about they're, they're connected to meaning and they're connected to connection, right? Like thousands of people say, yeah, you know something? When I think about it, I had needs that were being met and then they start to identify them. Why are needs, values, goals, and strengths so important? Well, according to my research and our work at Brivia, these things we call, we hear these words all the time, we throw them around, but you know what they are? They are powerful forces of meaning and motivation. Our needs, our psychological, social, emotional needs are very powerful drivers when we get up in the morning. Our values are super, actually, according to my work, values are the most powerful force of meaning and motivation. Think about that time you pounded your chest, right? Or put your hand on your chest. What were you talking about? What was your experience aligned with? When you drew that line in the sand and stepped back, right? I'm not going to go there. My values are in play. How about other goals? See, goals are important. We said this early on, but here's a, here's a tip. Think about why I'm going to give you some insight into this. Some goals that we get super excited and energized for, they actually have our needs and our values embedded in them, right? Strengths, right? When we have opportunities to use our knowledge, our skills, our ideas to demonstrate what we're capable and for them to be leveraged creates exceptionally meaningful experiences. And this is really important to know, right? Because that's the big difference is that when goals aren't motivated, and this is why I say there's nothing wrong with you, right? When you're not feeling motivated, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It means that you're dislocated from the things that give you meaning. Now, I have to say this, not all of us know what our core four is, right? And that's why I'm going to give you some tips on how you can find them. Because once you figure them out, you start to look at certain situations, start to look at, you know, two people asked me to move on the weekend to help them move, right? One of them I'm super excited about. The other one I'm dragging my, let's say, feet for this matter, right? So what, about, what else have we seen? Well, we've also learned in my work and at Brivia time and time again, that when we're in moments where we experience meaning, we are highly motivated and not just motivated, our performance is optimized. Our level of engagement is optimized. And the other good news, seeing as we go look at mental health now more than ever, we're strengthening our capacity for better mental health, emotional, social, physical. When this happens, right, for goals to be as effective as possible, right, for them to be as effective as possible, this is what we've learned at Brivia. To increase the likelihood that we're going to succeed, to, to elevate our level of effort that's required, our focus, our commitment, goals must have meaning. They must be meaningful, right? We believe that the lack, and this is it, we believe that the lack of motivation right, is meaning. We believe that the lack of meaning is the number one reason why many of us struggle with certain goals, staying focused, putting our effort there at, in our personal lives and at work. And sometimes it's the reason why we fail altogether. In the workplace, right, we believe that meaning is the greatest force for motivation. And now think about your work. Think about the times you've not been motivated, right? There's nothing wrong with you. 
right? We work with a lot of leaders and we are, we've got a great track record in improving this because we've, I think we've identified a key factor here. When goals have meaning, humans move, okay? So what can we do to make them more meaningful? We're gonna open it up to questions right away, but I wanna ask you, what are some of the things you think we can do to make it meaningful? Well, our experience has been pretty helpful. Let's start with, I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit, okay? Because I sometimes get really excited about this because it seems like one of those simple things, but let's clarify needs, values, goals, and strengths when you get out of bed are always operating. You may or may not be aware of them. We take thousands of people through reflections where they're going, oh, it was just great. You know, it's because because Robert was there. And when Robert was there, it was an awesome time. And then we go, okay, well, let's talk, let's, let's figure this out. What needs were operating? And all of a sudden it's about relationship, values of loyalty, predictability, friendship, right? And we start to figure out now that's, why is that important? Because it's not just Robert. There are these core four. So, so if Robert's not around, does that mean we're not? No, we look to the environment to where we can find friendship where we can find connection, where we can find whatever else was operating. That's how this starts to work. So pay attention, here we go. On an individual level, I'll give you some tips for individual level and the leadership level. And then I'm going to, we're gonna open it up for questions and comments. Pay attention to your greatest moments when you succeed. See, unfortunately in the Western world, what we're taught to do is when we fail, right? That's when it's like, okay, we failed. Let's, let's do a post-mortem, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, focus on what we did wrong. That's, no, you know something, it's very rarely that you're going to actually create conditions where you learn about your core four. You're just going to learn what you need to avoid and what you don't like. Go into those moments. Then you get to know your core four. Ask yourself these questions. What did, what did I need in that moment where I succeeded? What needs were being fulfilled along that pursuit? What's really cool about this simple exercise is you'll go like, you go, oh my gosh, I, I, I got fed during that project. I love to eat that kind of food. Like It's wild, right? Values, which values were in play? Well, it was about loyalty. Not only that, and I had somebody just the other day, they said, you know, I didn't think I really needed the title. You know something, Steve? I did. I needed that title. And I'm like, well, let's talk about that. And you know what? We started to connect some values. So, well, what values were in play? And she said, uh, control, um, to be empowered, to have a voice to make change, to make a difference. All of a sudden she's like, I never knew this. I just, I was always told like, you know, that's not important. That's why she struggled. Goals, what other goals are in play in that moment, right? When you were pursuing that goal, what other things were you getting along the way? Were you developing along the way? And what strengths, and this is what I love is in the Western world, we are terrible at focusing on our strengths, even though we give lip service to it. Number one question is hard to answer for most professionals and individuals is what, what are you good at? Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's really difficult. Focus on your strengths. Pull them out. Celebrate them. Honor them because that's where meaning and motivation lives. Align your goals. So then once you start doing that, align your goals. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. What needs? So when you're setting goals, this is often what doesn't happen. What goals that I'm setting, are they aligned with my needs? Now here, I'm going to beware. Beware of the word should. Here comes the tip. Right? Whenever you hear yourself, I should, you know, I should eat less. I should probably uh, do this. I should go to the gym. I should, you know, I should, I should you know, be more motivated. Often when you hear the word should, it means it's being, it's being driven by an external force of motivation. Often in relationships, it's being driven by someone else. Okay. So this is really important. It must be your core four. Your goals that you set for yourself must be aligned with your needs, your values, your goals and your strengths. So we're putting a blog out on this uh, this week because if they're not, this is, and I'm saying this with all the utmost love and compassion, be prepared to struggle. Be prepared to fail if your goals are not meaningful, okay? The other one is build clarity. And we have a successful goal checklist. It's one of my favorites. I've used it uh, for about 10 years in my career that you can check off those clarity areas Right? Once you've got a good idea of the meaning in your goal, then the other nine steps are going to be helpful. Right? Get to know. So for leadership, get to know your core four. People need you to be uh, to be motivated. People need you, right, to be able to to um, elevate their level. And you also need to know when are you feeling good. When can you recreate that? Learn what's meaningful and motivating to your team members. 
right? One of the important things is you cannot motivate people. I've learned this. You cannot motivate people if you don't know what motivates them. Think, think of how often leaders say, well, you should do this. You have to do this because I said so. It's what we do around here. It doesn't land. But imagine if I knew that, you know, for you, you needed to be involved. You liked collaboration and creativity and you wanted to strengthen your ability to communicate or have autonomy. See, now what I can do leads to the, leads to the third bullet. If I know that about you, I can, actually, I can actually align when you say, well, why should I do this, Steve? Why should I bother? I would align it to your needs, to your values, to your goals. Remember that trip that you said you, were, you wanted to take with the family? Yeah, that, and, and how you wanted to be more autonomous in your work? Yeah, that's why, that's why I'm letting you lead this project and why we've got to work hard on it because that, when we reach that target, we're going to accommodate both those things. Right? See, that makes it more meaningful. The other thing I like to, we like to do at Brivia is let people know that your companies actually have a core four, right? The vision, mission, and values and the strategic plan, right, are sources and forces of meaning and motivation. And if we can align, right, what we're asking our people to do, it has much more power than I told you so, much more power than you should, you should, much more power than because we have to, and that's the way we do things around here. Right. So if you're wondering how to do that, you can go to our webinar page on our on our, our website and look up the look up the webinar. Is your compass broken? Because it it gives a lot of insight and instruction on how to make your uh, company compass more uh, more meaningful and how you can leverage that. Finally, what's really important here, and I'm going to open it up to questions. I want to hear from you. Clarity is important. Goals that have clarity, but alone, they're not sufficient. Goals without connection have very little potency, right? For goals to be motivating, they must have clarity. They must balance connection with clarity, okay? And connection is about meaning and all of the, the things that we had talked about so far. So I want to just share a story to kind of tie things together. I wasn't sure if I was going to share this. I know a couple of minutes, we're going to, as a matter of fact, we're going to, op we're going to open it up to questions. I'm going to save this story for another time. But whether it's in life or at work, connection is key to motivation, to energy, to focus, to commitment, and your effort, right? It's critical to success, optimizing performance. So let's get to questions. I'm going to go, go over to questions, but you know at Brivia, we love to help, right? So on the individual level, right, we're going to send out our, our successful goal checklist for you in the follow-up. Leaders, you can check out some of our programs. Core communication is just amazing for tuning in to what's meaningful to your, uh, to your employees and how you can elevate that. For organizations, we actually have developed a growth system which like melds together, integrates connection and clarity. And it's a strategic planning and execution system, right? That is built on these concepts. It's designed to chart an exceptionally clear and achievable path to companies short, mid, and most importantly, long-term success, all right? So let's open it up to questions. Let, let's have a discussion okay about about what's on your mind and what's on your heart perfect well thank you steve uh you know not so much a question but a comment from lee in the chat just he loved your statement about when goals have meaning people move and yeah. he would just say he would add the word purpose there because yeah. uh because that really kind of helps him there do you have any thoughts on that yeah that's great lee i would also just say that uh you know we throw a lot of words around purpose really purpose according to Brivia is a goal that is stuffed with values, <laughs> right? Right, if you think about it. What's the difference between purpose? Because all companies have objectives, but when we start moving into purpose, Lee, right? What is purpose? Purpose becomes, it has more meaning. And the reason why purpose has more meaning is because it's a goal that's been injected with value, right? Like we could, we could uh, you know, a goal of, uh, you know, making money or our goal could be making money to provide literacy for children in our community. See, that goes from an objective to an objective with purpose, right? So, so we often yeah. throw that around, but great, great comment. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Well, another comment, someone would love to, Lena would love to hear the story. So if we got time, let's get to that. Okay. Um, All right. But a question, I heard COVID as a social pandemic really demotivated people, possibly with dopamine and brain chemistry function being affected. What, what are your thoughts on this, Steve? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think um, for sure. The I think that on one hand, just put it very simply, I think what COVID did, it was an accelerant to help us identify and kind of see the things that we kind of tolerated for too long that we were really putting up with. 
Another thing is I think it, the, the pandemic dislocated us from the things that were important to us, from our core four. We had to try to get safe. We had to try to get find value for us, find our place. And while we're, remember, survive and thrive. When we're surviving, we can't be thriving. And through COVID, we were trying to figure it out. We're trying to survive. So I couldn't really focus on meaning because I was trying to trying to keep my job or keep my kids safe or stay healthy. So I think one of the big things based on this curriculum and based on our work at Brivia is that what the what the pandemic did was it dislocated us from what we really needed. What mm -hmm. did we need? We needed we needed physical and social connection at a time when we were saying none of that. What did we need? Our values, our values of family, our values of going to work and seeing our colleagues. No, nope. our goals. Guess what? I don't even know what we're doing tomorrow. Do I have a job? Am I going to the rink? No, nope, you're not. And our strengths, I don't know about you, but I felt helpless. Most of us who are helpless, we couldn't even use our strengths, right? So if you think about it in the context of our core four being a source of our meaning, it was obliterated during and through the pandemic, which kind of makes sense of how we were feeling, what it did to our emotional, mental, and physical health, for sure. Yeah. All right. So. Um... Steve, another question came through. It's just around, okay, I know you said don't use the word should, right? But the question here- <laughs> We gotta be, we gotta be, it's just a, it's a good red yeah. flag, but sometimes even the shoulds, like, you know, we're married yeah. or we've got children, right? But those, even those shoulds have to have meaning, right? But if we're doing it just because we should, we gotta stop and really assess that goal as, do I have any of my core four in here? Right, because if it's not, here's the thing: if I've got a should that I get from my CEO at Privia, I mean, we've had some times I'm like, it's a should. I don't like it. I don't really want to do it. But I look for the meaning in it, which is strengthening mm -hmm. my relationship with my CEO, supporting my team. Now that should is starting to gain momentum. But if it's just purely a should without any core four, be prepared to struggle and be prepared to fail. But uh, go ahead. I kind of kind of jumped in on you. That finish your thoughts. Steve. You know, I think you got it. I think you got it me to do it or okay you're sa you're sounding like a bit of a robot steve i don't know if that's on my end or um it might be your connection but try that okay. again yeah oh, now i think there. okay i think you answered that one um and folks i think steve if you want to tell your story now we also have some time for a couple more questions if you want to put them in the chat or q a but steve why okay. don't you tell the story you were going to tell Okay. All right. We're often talking about setting goals. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to tie a story. I'm not really much of a storyteller, but I think this one is going to combine because we're either coaching other people or we're supporting them at work to be more motivated. So the story is when my son was eight years old, my son, his name is Zane and he's a, he's a phenomenal hockey player. And on the way home after one of his greatest games, he got four goals and two assists. And on the way home, uh, he was crying on the way home. And I was, I was concerned about that. And I, you know, uh, as a Dutch male <laughs> who was born competitive, <laughs> I was really, really uncomfortable. But anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm joking about that. And I, I, I we drove home and I asked him uh, what was going on and what he said. The thing that was bothering him was he, he got a lot of points, but he realized when he thought back on the game, he probably could have given the puck to his friend Hunter, who was the assistant captain, because Hunter hadn't scored a hat trick yet this year, and we're getting close to the end of the season. And this blew my mind because I had no idea. I learned in that drive home that my son, who was the top scorer and the top assist at the time, didn't really care about winning, didn't really care about getting the goal. And what he cared about was supporting his team to have fun and to be successful. This to me was like, oh, oh my goodness, right? And based on my research and all this kind of stuff. So why is that important? Well, I've done a lot of coaching and I've watched the coaches and helped the coaches. And what happens when you're down two goals? Right, what happens now when you're done one goal and you have you have three minutes left on the clock? Often, when you think about motivation, what coaches often do, and this is the way we're taught, is you look at the team and say, let's win this one. And we try to get them stoked with one or two statements. Now, that's the way we're taught. But guess what? What I learned is if you tell my son, do it to win, you've got to win this one. What I learned that day is it puts stress on him. It's not motivating, right? So what my coach needs to say, our coach needs to say to someone like Zane is, let's do this for the team. Let's have fun, right? And, and you, you start to light them up. So what has this got to do with a whole team of 15 kids? Well, if we take the time to get to know their core four, right? One of them loves having their grandpa there. One of them likes getting pizza as an incentive. Another one likes to do it for fun. And hey, a couple of them love to win. So you know what you do? You take 30 seconds to go down the back of the bench and say, look, we're down one. 
we're down one and we got two minutes left and you go behind each each individual player and you say your grandpa's here we're getting pizza do it for the team and you've got 15 <laughs> kids trying to jump over the board and they all want to get in there and they all want to leave it on the ice but let's bring it back a bit and combine this whole talk that's connection right that's powerful effort but we also need clarity because when they get on the ice and organizations need to keep this in mind as well, when they get on the ice, they've got to know what the score is because are we down one or are we down two? That's really important when you're celebrating one goal and you realize we've been down two and we've got one second left. The other thing they got to do is look at the clock. See, clarity becomes very important, especially when the fuel is there and the passion is there. They got to know the score and they got to know the time that they've got to get the goal. They've got everything else, right? So I wanted to share that with you. When our team is down, when our team is feeling unmotivated, when we are feeling unmotivated, what do we choose to say to them? And if it lands on their core four, their needs, their values, their goals and strengths, it will not only light them up, it will increase the likelihood of success and probably not only achieving, but exceeding that goal that we set for ourselves. So thanks for asking about the story because I love talking about my children. So thank you so much. Yeah. I hope that was helpful, folks. Yeah, see, that was helpful for me. I coach basketball and uh, guess what I'm gonna use tomorrow night in our game. So <laughs> very helpful. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us here today, Steve. Thank you for your usual great job at delivering this, this topic here for us today. Folks, as, as Steve mentioned, we're gonna send you a follow-up tomorrow that has the link to the article as well as a, a handy worksheet that you can either fill out a uh, fillable PDF or you can download and print and use as a, kind of a checklist as you're going through your goals. You also see this QR code here. Um, we would love for you to follow us on Brivia. And, and shamefully, we set a, not shame, shamelessly, I'm gonna tell you about a goal we set last year to get to a thousand followers. We're now at 996. So we would love to get to a thousand followers if you want to join us. But also, we put uh, we put all talk about goals, right? We we also put um, relevant information up on our on our LinkedIn page on a, just about a daily basis. So we're excited that you joined us here today. Again, please look at our website at our resources, and we really want to engage with you. So hopefully, this was the start of a conversation for some of you. Feel free to reach out to us, and we'd be happy to continue the conversation. Until next month's webinar, we thank you all again for joining us and uh, have a great rest of your day. And yes, we will be sharing the recording tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, everybody.